So in this video, we're going to talk about the malonic ester synthesis, okay? And similar to what we've been doing about alpha carbons and alpha hydrogens, we're going to do the same thing with the malonic ester synthesis. Now, the molecule looks something like this. Now, this is a molecule you have to remember. Now, I know some book actually uses dimethylmalonate. I don't know why. Um, but again, dimethylmalonate, diethylmalonate, they work the same, okay? Now, the idea is that you got to remember this molecule and we're going to do some chemistry with it. So the idea is if you treat this molecule with some sort of base, okay, so a strong non-nucleophilic base such as sodium ethoxide and ethanol, okay, what would I get? Well, where's my alpha carbon? My alpha carbon is smack right dead adjacent to the uh, to the carbonyl. And so here's my alpha carbons in the middle. And once I treat that with base, I'm going to take one of those hydrogens off, okay? I'm going to generate a negative charge on the middle carbon, which is my alpha carbon. And the idea is I could treat this with some sort of SN2 target. So in this case, I'm going to use methyl iodide. And when I use methyl iodide, here's what I form. It just attacks. So it does an SN2 attack, okay, on the carbon and displaces the iodine, okay? And when that happens, here's what we form. We form the CH3 group there, okay? And we still have this whole group here. Yeah. Now in the second step, in the, in the third step of the synthesis, uh, we actually use acid and hydrolyze the molecule. So we use acid and heat and hydrolyze the molecule. And what acid does is that it totally eradicates the molecule and hydrolyzes it to give us a dicarboxylic acid and two moles of, 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 ethanol, of ethanol. And so when I hydrolyze, here's a structure that I get. There's my dicarboxylic acid. Yeah, there's my dicarboxylic acid. We're just literally hydrolyzed from here. Okay. And we also have two moles of CH3, CH2, OH. Yeah, we don't care about this. This is a structure that we care about. Now, going through the full mechanism, here's where it gets weird. So I'm actually going to rotate. So I'm going to rotate one of these bonds to, to actually form hydrogen bonds. Okay. So redrawing the structure, I have something that looks like this. Okay, I'm going to rotate it. So now there's my ketone carbon. There's my oxygen. There's my hydrogen. Okay, I'm going to rotate in such fashion. Okay, now it just becomes a, a, a bond making and bond breaking situation. So the first thing that happens is that the, the, the bond on the oxygen will come and bond to the hydrogen. Okay, once that happens, this bond will break and form a double bond here. And then the next thing that happens is that this bond will break and form a double bond here. Okay, and so what do we get? We get this. We get, look where my arrow is going. I have a double bond here. I have a double bond here. So this is what? CO2. So this we produce carbon dioxide in the process. Plus, I have the double bond here. I have an alcohol here and I have an alcohol here. Okay. Now, now we're drenching up all our knowledge from Orchem 1. Remember we said that this is actually a tautomer. Remember we said that anytime we have an alcohol group adjacent to a, uh, uh, adjacent to an alkene group, it's actually going to give you the ketone. It's mad that it's going to give you the ketone. So this is going to rapidly tautomerize. And this is going to give you something that looks like this. Here's my ketone and there's my OH. Okay. It's going to always give you the ketone. So this bond will come up and bond, double bond to the oxygen and the hydrogen is actually going to shift down to here. Okay. So this is a structure that I formed. Now, if I want to redraw this, it looks something like this. Yeah. And this is my acetic acid synthon that I was talking about. So diethylmalonate forms the acetic acid synthon plus an R group. In this case, what was the R group? Methyl iodide. So the methyl group actually was added on to the acetic acid synthon. So that's the mechanism and, and the general structure of, of, of what we're talking about here. Okay. Now, again, let's go to another step-by-step uh, -step synthesis of the melanic acid synthesis. 
So what if we take uh, diethylmalonate again? What if we take diethylmalonate, okay, and we add sodium ethoxide, okay, and ethanol. And again, here's what I want you guys to know. I'm going to create a video with just pure retrosynthesis because that's what the class is about. Obviously, we could predict the reaction um, products, but the retrosynthesis is what's important. I need to, you need to be able to see a product and need to be able to come up with the, the starting materials and how, how to synthesize the material. So going back to this, if we do that again, we know where alpha carbon, alpha carbon and hydrogens are. It's literally right here. So we're going to deprotonate. So we generate a negative, negative charge there. Okay. And let's say we treat this with an SN2 target. So let's say we use uh, phenyl bromide. Yeah. We use phenyl bromide. Well, again, it's simply going to attack and displace the bromine. And so in this case, we come to a structure that looks like this. This carbon is bonded to the bromine carbon that has the phenyl group, which I'm just going to abbreviate as pH. Okay. Now, remember we said what's the next step? We hydrolyze with acid in heat, heated conditions. Yeah. I remember we said that we form the dicarboxylic acid and these two will actually go as methanol will actually go as ethanol. Yeah. Which we don't care about. So when we hydrolyze, we form the dicarboxylic acid. There's our pH. There's our dicarboxylic acid group. Now remember we said in the next step, we're going to rotate to form hydrogen bonding. Okay. So when we rotate to form hydrogen bonding, <coughs> Uh, we rotate to form hydrogen bond, and this is how the structure looks. So we have, you know, this is now where my ketone is, and now I have my uh, oxygen that has a hydrogen. Okay, and now we say this is just bond breaking and bond making. So the first thing that happens, these lone, these, uh, this pi bond is going to come here and form a bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Simultaneously, this bond is going to break to form a double bond there, and this bond is going to break to go here. And so in the process, again, we form CO2. Yeah, we form CO2 plus, um, yeah, I'm forgetting my pH here, <laughs> my phenyl group here. So we form CO2 plus this compound. Here's my pH. Here's my double bond. Here's my alcohol group, and there's the other alcohol group here. Okay, I'm drawing it just as it is, okay? And then we know that anytime we have an alcohol adjacent to an alkene, we're gonna get a ketone, okay? So this bond is gonna come here and form a double bond. This hydrogen is gonna mitigate down here, okay? So if you want to put the final product of this, the pH represents our phenyl group like this, okay? This is bonded to this is bonded to this, which has another carbon, which has another carbon that's going to have my ketone and there's my carboxylic acid. Again, if I look at the product, there's my acetic acid synthon. Okay, and look what I added. This this phenyl group here with the alkyl halide supposedly being right there. So that's in a nutshell the malonic ester synthesis. Again, nothing pretty much hard, just looking from it. What becomes difficult is giving you giving you the product and asking you how to make it.